The Rivian delivery van built for Amazon has now been on offer for other commercial companies. Built on the original R1 platform, the model names Rivian officially calls them on the website are the Delivery 500 and Delivery 700, literally denoting their storage capacities in cubic feet. Its whale-like design seen in the Amazon vehicles seems intent to make a friendly appearance. This space is likely to get in focus as the timeline on climate goals shrink rapidly. Much like other Rivian vehicles, the vans too are available in multiple drivetrain options and Rivian's enduro design. Even as a fleet option, its primary application as a delivery vehicle changes its range expectations, which should be far in excess of requirements in regular city driving and drop-offs. Now that it's made available outside of Amazon, it will surely bring more branding opportunities for others, from its key fob to its entry and exit. In this video, we will take a look at this product and try to understand its value, specs and application utilities. So let's get into it. Before we get into the specs, let's clear out the exact disclaimer from Rivian and I quote, the actual vehicle capability will depend on selected options and trim. Performance estimates vary based on battery pack, tire, drive modes, vehicle load and weather. All official EPA values are noted as estimated EPA range. Some range and charge times are preliminary manufacturer estimates based on the simulation and EPA test cycles and are not official EPA values noted as estimated range. Range will vary based on a number of factors including battery pack, tires, drive mode, HVAC setting, driving behavior, weather, vehicle condition and battery age. Well, EV buyers could do well keeping that in mind for all electric vehicles. The estimated range on the Delivery 500 is 161 miles, while on the Delivery 700 it is 153 miles. This range may look small to EV buyers, but this as stated earlier is a delivery application and is more than adequate for city driving and drop-offs. Remember, it's also an estimate as on date. These vans are plugged in at their locations for the most part and execute set routes before returning to the base, which is mostly at slow city speeds. That is actually a good case for exploring autonomous driving in our opinion. These are the kind of applications we believe should be the first to attempt driverless vehicles. That though for some other day. The Delivery 500 is 248.5 inches long against the 278 inches of the Delivery 700. Their width is 96.4 inches and 103.5 inches with mirrors and height is 114.7 inches and 114.8 inches respectively. Both the 500 and the 700 have a ground clearance of 6.9 inches and a wheelbase of 157.5 inches and 187 inches respectively. The exact 30 inches separate them in the wheelbase as their overall length. The gross weight is 9,350 pounds with a payload of 2,734 pounds for the 500 with actual 487 cubic feet of storage, hence the figure of 500, and 9,500 pounds and 2,513 pounds for the 700 with 652 cubic feet of storage for the number 700. Viewers will do well to keep in mind here that these cars are customized and could even have different pre-installed equipment that may need to be accounted for. That would change these values like the payload accordingly. The cargo area I found was 7 inches wider in the 700. The performance will be in excess of 300 horsepower and around the same pound feet in torque. The vans may have a starting price of $83,000 and $87,000 as stated on the Rivian website and tax credits may apply. These values could change significantly with the huge customizations that are possible as will be the incentives based on the states where these are bought, California for example. Vans are obviously very customizable and though we will examine the van currently on offer, these vehicles will see many different things based on the customer's needs and requests. In fact, Rivian states so explicitly and will work with customers to incorporate customer requests into the final design. The vans have no frunk and the front is entirely a single panel. The washer fluid opening is just under the wipers, with two cameras right at the top of the hood. We expect these vehicles to have 100 kWh LFP batteries, 
on what are front wheel drive vehicles with probably 95 to 96 kilowatt hour usable up to 50 kilowatt max charging expandable to 100 kilowatts the terms for the extra charging speed are unclear as on date the van has physical parking sensors all around with a camera under the side mirrors two cameras over the rear door and sensors on the side where you see the powered by rivian sign it brings the same 12 inch instrument cluster and the 15 inch center display as in the r1 its physical design needs to be weighed from the delivery driver's perspective the vans bring some interesting design features the proximity lock ensures that the middle door locks as the driver moves away and unlocks back when it senses the driver this door logic i can imagine will be very useful when the drivers are constantly getting off the vehicle dropping packages when you put the car in park the middle door opens put it in drive it closes back interestingly putting it in park the vehicle appears to hold it on the brake booster for a minute or two before clamping the electronic parking brake can guess its intention owing to the expected constant stop and drive delivering packages the parking brake is on the rear axle for a front wheel drive vehicle why the front wheel drive the best guess here is the need to keep the storage floor flat rear wheel drive vehicles have a slightly raised floor over the rear axle and hence though the parking brakes are on the rear axle the van itself is probably front wheel drive just a guess funnily even turning too fast will prompt an alert message the driver monitoring camera shows on the driver side a pillar it has a couple of types of hazard lights one a slightly faster blinking one with both fairly bright and loud the foldable passenger seat has a little first aid kit underneath and a cup holder along with a place for the wind plate near the passenger feet the service panels are available under the driver seat with low voltage fuses a 12 volt and two cup holders behind the driver seat at the bottom feel strange to me as a place to hold a drink there is also a 120 volt outlet there all of this is of course customizable everything that makes it easy for the worker using the van it brings tons of utility storage for the driver all around the driver seat with two wireless charging pads right behind the driver seat are the breaker switches that show at least a 40 amp breaker that's 40 amp ac on the inverter a 120 volt is available immediately behind the driver seat back in the rear storage a usb a and usb c port each is available under the center display and a nema 1450 in the rear of the vehicle that's plenty of energy on board on the whole a button on the rear of the vehicle opens a slide giving access to the rear storage and a small contraption enables closing it the rear storage can easily accommodate a 6 ft 10 in individual standing upright the shelving is designed consistently across the vans so multiple drivers can very quickly start using the van even on different individual vehicles the rear storage finds a huge fan on the ceiling the cabin when driving is extremely silent given that remember it is a van it will have plenty of equipment at the back and that will rattle having said that the drive itself will feel extremely quiet that's fast emerging as an enduro virtue it will also deliver an unbelievable launch for a van that's essentially front wheel drive a light steering for the size of the vehicle with a great turning radius that turns very smoothly but needs some help recentering and does not really do it automatically the brakes blend fairly aggressively its rear view mirror is good but being a van the on screen camera output is still important it brings adaptive cruise control and can hold a steady set speed on a highway the cameras are always great showing all views as necessary the sound system is going to be disappointing for most with just a few speakers and with a cabin noise at high speeds listening to anything could be a struggle the recommended tire pressure is 70 psi when on the 245 7017s the van disabled cabin heating when charging why we'll need to deep dive the van has no navigation system as checked and that means that there is no automatic battery preconditioning as of now don't take my word here and we'll need to deep dive on this for which we'll look for the next opportunity for whatever reason the charging hence does appear to get inconsistent the rate may wobble up and down seems to be carefully pulling energy even with the temperatures well within limits the range as stated earlier is not a sensitive variable for vans 100 plus miles of city driving and dropping packages is luxurious 
These are early days, early charge curves and even an early experience for us. So don't make a judgment on the charging just yet. Surely the Amazon relationship has paid dividends in real world delivery experience. Features like the oversized high visibility rear brake light does that extra bit in protecting pedestrians, drivers and other motorists. The physical parking sensors in the front accompanied by collision avoidance with sight sensors and two cameras on the rear door at the top seems to bring good safety all around. Can imagine a vehicle application like this with naturally lesser visibility in comparison to small cars and it's flying over city streets could make these features important. We will look to our next opportunity with this vehicle and expect constant improvements. I am personally as anxious about Rivian as any of its admirers in the given EV market. I do believe that they will make it and the products they make are truly amazing. If you want to see our latest real trip test with our Tesla Model 3 with the LFP battery after 18,000 miles for range and efficiency, click the link here or in the description. See you in the next one.